Only on CBS This Morning, part two of our investigation into the alleged lack of diversity at the nation's premier law enforcement agency. Now, yesterday, you heard from a group of black former FBI agents calling for change. Did you know that only 4% of FBI agents worldwide are black? This morning, two former agents who fought during their careers to level the playing field for their fellow black agents are speaking out after a summer of racial reckoning in this country. They say the lack of diversity at the FBI, at the FBI rather, has now reached crisis levels. They spoke exclusively to our Jeff Gaze. Jeff, good morning to you. Good morning, Gail. FBI officials say that they are dedicated to diversity, that it is a core value. But the former black agents we spoke with say that they experienced and witnessed something entirely different during their decades-long careers inside the FBI. When the culture is not conducive to minorities, you have an obligation to speak out. Eric Jackson was the special agent in charge of the FBI's Dallas field office. I believe a crisis is happening. The seventh floor in the FBI is where decisions and policies are made. Right now, there are no African Americans on the seventh floor. Of the top 10 leadership positions in the FBI, all are held by white men. What has occurred is what uh, a lot of psychologists call institutionalized racism. As head of the FBI's Black Affairs Diversity Committee, Jackson says he got a firsthand look at how the upper ranks of FBI leadership kept blacks from climbing the ladder. As the only black sitting in the room, and I hear people talking about, we want to prevent lowering standards, we don't want to change the culture, that's code word for me that we don't believe that there's a problem. You think that's code words? Oh, absolutely. When you leave out of the room, you're demoralized. Several former black agents told CBS News that managers inside the FBI who are mostly white tend to only promote individuals who look like themselves. First of all, the numbers are horrific. Black women make up only 1% of the 13,000 FBI agents around the world. Jennifer Love retired in 2012 as an assistant director, reaching the highest rank of any black woman in the FBI's history. It became tiring. I would go in and everybody looked the same. White men with their dark suits on, their white shirts, their blue and red ties. Love says that she was a champion for the FBI, even appearing in recruiting ads. Near the end of her career as the Bureau's head of security, she oversaw the mandatory polygraph examinations for new recruits. I had a stack of letters from black and brown people who had failed the polygraph who said they thought that they were being asked inappropriate questions. She crunched the numbers and discovered black applicants were disproportionately failing the polygraph exam. Her proposal videotaped the polygraphs to create accountability. I can tell you internal to my division, they were opposed to it. They, they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it. The number of black agents in the FBI has hovered so low for so long that they have created this. They call it a buffalo nickel. It is a challenge coin to commemorate the fact that black agents historically have only made up about 5% of the FBI, a number that is lower today. To sit here today and hear that the numbers have gotten gotten worse and the personal sacrifice listen i moved my kids eight times two divorces okay i can love the bureau and want it to be accountable but you got to believe that it's necessary this eric jackson's successful career came to an abrupt end last year i saw the glass ceiling he was gunning for an executive assistant director position there are only six in the entire FBI. He was told he wasn't eligible because of his rank. Jackson says the Bureau changed the eligibility rules while he was applying, and the job went to a white agent with similar credentials. Other black special agents in charge, we, we noticed that, and uh, the message was sent loud and clear that the, the rules didn't apply to us. Jackson retired last year after 21 years with the FBI. How are you going to respond to people who just say, this is sour grapes? If they think this is sour grapes, then they don't understand uh, what's going on. Because if, if we don't look like the community we serve, how can that community trust us?
All of the former agents that we spoke with say they are coming forward because they love the FBI. In the meantime, FBI officials say that Director Ray has expressed a willingness to uh, discuss some of the issues raised by our report. While they regret that he was not able to schedule an interview before the report aired, Officials tell me that Director Ray has expressed a willingness to sit down for an interview to discuss some of these issues in the coming weeks. Gail. Well, let me tell you, Jeff, that is very encouraging to hear because I'm thinking there needs to be some meetings on the seventh floor. It's heartbreaking to hear how these agents have operated, uh, dedicated to the FBI agency, and to be treated this way. It seems like there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. Well, there are, and I have to say, Gail, since our first report aired, we've gotten a lot of emails from other former black agents and some phone calls as well. Hmm. All right, to be continued, Jeff Begay's really nice job.